What is going on guys? Welcome back to another day of a turbo kit install on this beautiful F-150. Last video you guys saw, we finished up the install of the kit itself. We managed to get the truck running on the stock fuel system and everything. Started up perfectly fine. Turbo sounded amazing. But since then, we've been out of town and Doug has made quite a few changes to this truck to get it finished buttoned up for what today's video is, which is gonna be starting it up and taking it out on the street for the first time with this new fuel system. And I'll let Doug talk about a lot of the other goodies that he's added onto this thing. But uh, in a short period of time, over a few days, this thing has really come a long way since you guys have seen it last. So basic walkthrough of what we had. Of course, we did our twin setup from Helion on this truck. Uh, super nice kit. And uh, of course, we walked through having to do our wastegates and everything on that. Since then, we knew that we wanted to exceed what our factory fuel system was going to supply for this. So we got with four and, uh, and also fuel injector clinic and got a nice setup. It comes in the box. Uh, of course, it doesn't quite drop into place. You just have to build your lines. So as you see what we walked through on this uh, engine bay here, made a basically a bolt-on bracket and then kind of did a nice symmetrical arrangement here with what's going on. We got our vacuum block in the center. I do want to mention, like Doug said, this is an entirely custom setup. This doesn't just come out of the box and you bolt this bracket. All this bracket and everything that you're seeing here was all custom made by Doug to have it sit and look completely symmetrical and beautiful. It is out of the box a nice system, but there is some end user that you have to uh, kind of get creative with and that's what makes a difference on something like this. Uh, we've got our high pressure side regulator and then our low pressure side. This one's actually static. So this one basically regulates it 58 to 60 pounds uh, for our high pressure fuel pump side and then passes through our rails, comes out the back side and then loops back into our low pressure side. And this one is our one to one rising rate, which is tagged in to these inputs here. So this um, is actually a perfect time to not only educate everybody else, but myself, because I don't even know. Can you explain and like walk me through the high pressure and low pressure side for the regulators and stuff? I know one's after rails and one's pre rails, so. Yeah, so the what we have coming in is from the back, we've got our triple pump system that we put in through four. Right. Um, and then it comes in through a 10 AN feed uh, through, of course, check valve, uh, fuel filter, all that kind of good stuff. Comes in to our high side here. This is our high side. Uh, pump that is cam driven. This is your basically for your direct injection side. Well, what you need to do is you need to have essentially a static pressure for this to work at all times properly. If you get too low or too high, it starts wigging out. It doesn't like that. So generally about 58 to 60 pounds is where you want it to be at. And what this does is as it comes in through here and it gets to this first one, as you know, a regulator can't regulate necessarily before because you'll end up with volume flow, things like that. Right. So it comes in through here and this sets anything before it at 60 pounds for sure. That I so, see now, okay. So you get 60 pounds. Now, as it comes out of this one, goes out the back. At this point, it comes down, comes around, and you gotta think of it as like volume flow, not necessarily pressure at this point right. until it gets to this point. Now, whenever you're just, you know, idling the engine or something, it's gonna have vacuum, but essentially no vacuum reference. This one's set right now at 45 pounds, which would be kind of like your normal setting you would see on a port injected style. Okay. And of course with vacuum, it's gonna actuate this diaphragm and it'll, it'll fluctuate up and down some. And as you get into boost, it'll go up to more. And then- And that's just keeping you... rail pressure high. Since we're obviously up higher RPM, it's gonna be consuming a lot more fuel. So I'm assuming that that's why we would need more fuel pressure. Yeah, well, it's it's like a one-to-one -one rising rate, just like any other boosted application. Um, it helps to keep a linear uh, progression throughout and uh, kind of keeps fuel injector data around the same. As you're increasing boost, you're gonna increase pressure to uh, compensate for that. It's coming out of there. So this one will regulate your rail side and this one basically regulates your direct injection side. The direct injection side's happy thanks to this one. And then our boosted with our rail and everything is happy thanks to this one. For for our hob switch right here, this is gonna be uh, turning on our third pump. So we have two hot in the tank at all, all right. times and then one. Which uh, is similar setups to you guys have seen in all the other cars and stuff whenever we do these fuel systems. It's essentially just there to not waste three pumps at all times because you don't really need that if you're just idling or if you're just cruising around town. The only time you need three pumps is whenever you're really getting into boost, which is what the purpose of the hop switch is. It detects boost, tells the third pump, kick on, and you've got plenty of fuel. And we've got it all nice and regulated here on our vacuum block. We're coming out of this one, comes into a 10 AN feed, goes into here, and this will feed all of our reference points. We've actually got one hidden over here to use for a dyno reference. We've got a couple of them here to feed over to uh, 
our boost solenoid here. And then another one comes over to here. And then there's some other miscellaneous vacuum lines that that tags off into. And then of course, comes over out of this side, slopes back down. And since we have a brake booster here, of course, you can't pressurize that can, at least not a whole lot without <laughs> having some issues. So we got a nice check valve from Vibrant just to regulate, make sure that we have all of our boost where we want it and it'll stop there. Not continue onto that booster. Yeah, and, so you know, brakes will that. be fine. <laughs> After that though, I mean, really like the factory manifolds and stuff are all in the same places because of how the kit fits up. So the other changes I guess would be notable would be the catch can that- Doug ahead, actually fabricated. Yeah, I went ahead and hand built this. It's, you know, it's not the prettiest thing ever. It's really not but, bad though. But it's I mean, really, really being completely in-house with a MIG, I'm pretty happy with it. It's honestly like almost seven quarts. So you should really very rarely have to service this internally baffled. There's two baffles that go through here that have little holes drilled in for our air to condensate on. Drop that oil down. And then we've got a drain valve at the bottom here. And of course our two vents on this side. This um, is definitely plenty of volume too for what we're doing. Yeah, it I mean, it'll be very good. It'll be good. We've got two 10 a in lines that I went ahead and built in to here, the tag into the top side where the PCVs would normally come out and you know, little miscellaneous brackets and stuff, some AN separators, good stuff like that just to make it look professional. So, and then we've got, like I said, our boost controller over here on a little bracket. This is where some of those other lines come over and feed into. And we've got this other one that drops down. You'll see once we get underneath and feeds to the waste gates. Um, there's not a top and bottom side to these since they're internal gates. So what this is essentially doing is it feeds into here. And if you don't have this activating, it will feed directly through this check in here and go and open those gates. Now, in an internal style, if you want to regulate it, what it's gonna do is actually bleed some off through this open port here. Mm -hmm. So essentially it's like cheating it, not opening the valves quite as soon, therefore giving you more boost whenever you're requiring it. Um, and of course it's all run through the firewall, all the AN lines and everything, zip tied, cleaned up. That makes sense actually. I was wondering how that worked because I was thinking about the inverse. Instead of it bleeding to the top, yeah. it literally bleeds off so it doesn't open them as soon. That makes sense actually. So that's kind of the different functionalities of internal versus external. We got into a little bit of that earlier and there's plenty of good explanations online. If you're curious, you know, do some Googling educate yourself. Never hurts to know a little bit more each day. I think that pretty much wraps up most of the engine based stuff that we got going on. Yeah. Continuing on with the fuel system stuff and what we were talking about with the fuel pump controller module. This is going to be Ford's SC3 controller that we utilized on this. Basically we ran our power, our power wire from the front uh, through a grommet through the firewall feeding back into here. This is going to be standard two gauge and then coming out of here there's a grommet that feeds through and goes down and we're grounded to the frame rail. It's an aluminum body truck. Aluminum will conduct, but on this one, I suggest going all the way to the frame rail just to make sure that you can get a good electrical flow through the system. These two wires over here, what you see are gonna be our turn-ons for this and also our hob switch input. And then the other three here are gonna be your pump activations that actually go out and feed onto the top side of our, uh, our fuel hat module. So pump one, pump two, those will be active at all times. And then whenever this reference here for the hob switch comes in and sees this other one, it'll turn on our pump three and then we'll have three pumps uh, hot, but that'll only be in higher boosted areas. That pretty much wraps it up on that one. Nothing too crazy. Just a nice clean install FC3 and a good little spot that you can access if you ever need to change fuses, get to it to do some testing, whatever you need to do with it. Um, we've got our boost gauge slash uh, controller and a wide band gauge, which uh, in this case is gonna be uh, one of our Innovate controllers. And you'll notice whenever you key on these will actually cycle on. E-Boost 2 controller for this, like I said, boost gauge and controller in one, AFR gauge, uh, so that we can have, you know, a little bit of a heads up display. The Ford F-150s don't actually have a wide band mode on this. So just to be able to do some uh, self-checking while you're racing the truck, doing whatever you want to do, make sure that we're in a safe spot there on it. Something else pretty cool too, is that this is pretty awesome because Doug completely fabricated that on his own. You can't exactly go buy a gauge pod with two gauge pods or two gauges to fit right here anywhere. So instead of trying to just half-ass it and do any kind of shortcut, he actually went ahead and fiberglass the whole entire thing in. Yeah, so this is basically a fiberglass insert mold that will drop in to the factory, what I'd call it a sunglass holder area. So I built a cup for it and then uh, cut out basically your shape that you want to have work around out of wood 
glass that into place and then wrap the whole thing in a fabric material. In this case, an old t-shirt will work. Glass over that, go back, do a couple layers for reinforcement, sand, bondo, and then of course, in the end, we went ahead and used a uh, bed liner coat to kind of flow with the rest of the textured black interior of the truck and same thing that's going on with the brackets under the hood, all that kind of good stuff. So it sounds really simple, but until you've done it, you wouldn't understand necessarily how, how much time it takes to do fiberglass work. At that point, um, that pretty much wraps up the interior. The rest of it's pretty OEM. I think Gavin's got a steering wheel that he's gonna end up swapping in here at some point for a little bit of a, I don't know. Paddle shifting action. There you go, <laughs> Raptor, Raptor paddle shifting action. did a teardrop because of all the tears from the haters of this truck. That's true. <laughs> and all the losers that it's gonna collect. That is true. So next up, we got the truck up in the air. Next thing that we could talk about is Doug's exhaust that we did. Well, I say we did, but he did while we were gone. Yeah, so <clears throat> what y'all saw last time on the first start was basically just a four inch open dump from our uh, Y pipe, which I mean, honestly sounds great, but clearly we can't leave it like that. You don't want flames underneath the truck and also exhaust fumes, everything else that'll get inside the cab. What we went ahead and did, welded a V-band on and then come out the back. And I don't know if y'all are familiar with pie cuts, but pie cuts are a way to basically re retain the same ID on exhaust piping while having to make bins. It's something that pretty much any good quality exhaust system utilizes and just helps prevent any kind of restrictions inside the exhaust, any kind of obstacles yeah. to flow, all that kind of good shit. Going off that, what he's talking about is if you were to take a piece of pipe, let's say it's three inch diameter and you were to bend it, obviously there is an end of it that is going to be bent over that is going to be stretched and flexed and eventually after flexing it and bending it, the inner diameter is going to become ovalized and a little bit smaller than three inches. Well, actually quite a bit smaller. Yeah. So by, like he was saying, pie cutting it, you're keeping everything exactly at four inches. Yeah. And what you do is as you pie cut it, the, the reason it's called a pie cut is if you think about cutting a pie, literally you have a very low angle that you cut a pie slice out of and that those angles, as you add them up over certain areas, get you to whatever angle you want. In this case, Normally about seven and a half degrees on either side is about what you want. So you get about 15 to 16 degrees out of each bend area. And that's how you kind of snake a few of them together to get the angles that you want. Coming over here, we had about four pieces to come up and then rotate back over. And this is just to get over our frame rail here. So once we get over that, we straighten back out <clears throat> and have a little kick to it to avoid our frame rail here. Also, we got a wide band in. This is the one that goes in and reads uh, to our inside gauge. Plenty after the turbos, but also in a nice straight area, not anywhere near uh, the end of the exhaust. So should give us quality readings, oh, whatever we yeah. need to see. When we come down here, this one's actually a mandrel bin four. So gives us a little bit of a kick that we needed to start with, but clearly you have some work around here through these areas and you don't want to go too low to make sure that you don't hit stuff in the road or whatever. I know that these track bars are lower, but the higher you keep it up, also the cleaner it looks whenever you come up the side of the vehicle. So. A few more pie cuts and some kicks here and there. Comes out to a straight and then angles out to be able to flatten out with the truck here to yeah, then give us like... our accent for our teardrop. Basically four inch with mandrel bends and pie cuts coming out to the side and give it a teardrop for a little bit of a flare to it, a little bit of style, whatever you want to call it. And the craziest part is that up to this point, you guys have heard every single thing that I have pretty much seen that Doug has done while we were gone. Now, the kicker here is that we do already have a file from Lund that is already on the truck and we've been good to start it. I haven't heard it at all. Oh, in fact, I came up here last night and was up here probably like nine or 10 o'clock and I was in here itching and I was really debating with myself. I was like, should I start it and just hear what it sounds like? I was like, nah, I want to keep it genuine. So here, without further ado, is our genuine first reactions to what this thing sounds like. Cause we haven't gotten to hear the exhaust. We haven't gotten to hear anything. I'm sure Doug started it to hear it. No, I, I didn't. haven't. I haven't You didn't? No, no I, shit. I told y'all I wasn't going to do it until we were ready. No shit. Okay. So this is, that's why I did not start anything yet at all. Nothing. Well, shit. All yeah. right. So basically the plan is from here is we're going to start it up, see what it sounds like. And then Lund has already given us instructions to go out on the street. So I'll probably drive and get Doug to ride with me. He'll get his laptop. We'll set up data logging and everything, make a log doing their requested parameters on the street, get a log back. And then hopefully next video that you guys see, we'll be ready to put this thing up on the dyno and see what it really makes. So without further ado, let's get this mother trucker on the ground and hear what it sounds like. Hank going to be ready to party. Hank, Hank, Hank. I'm pretty excited. The craziest thing too, is that we knew that we were doing this build 
two weeks probably before this truck, well, about a week before this truck was even picked up. And like, it has just been almost two months now that we've known that we were doing this and haven't gotten to actually see it or feel it or hear it or anything until literally right here, this second, this second, this second. Maybe a couple more seconds. Maybe a couple more seconds. All right, momento of truth. We're gonna data log the first start. And then also after we get the truck up to operating temp, we've got a data log for a few minutes of idle. Then we're gonna go on a drive, do a few slow climbs in second to third gear. We'll do that in a minute though. For right now, we're gonna start it, double check over everything, make sure we don't have any leaks, pressure check everything. Once we're good to go, we'll get it at operating temp and start logging, so. Captain. Oh, thought about it plugged in? Let me see. Still no actuation though. It is plugged in. There oh, there it go. goes. It had to do a learning process. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay, cool deal. Uh, that's what I was making sure. All right, clutch. Clutch down. Yeah. Go ahead and do this. We'll prime it. I'm nervous. <laughs> First prime, do another prime. All right, I'm gonna first start. All right. sleeper status <laughs> so it turns out somehow getting the exhaust out from under the truck made it a lot louder it is real loud wow holy shit dude this thing is gonna be the turbos are so loud. That's only 2,000 RPM. Woo! This motherfucker is gonna be bad. Bad. <laughs> well, my freaking dream since before I had a YouTube channel of having a turbo street truck. It's finally fucking real. I have been wanting this shit since I was literally 16, dude. My first vehicle was a V6 Silverado and I was porting shit on a V6 Silverado because I just wanted a fast truck. I don't know why. I really don't know why. I just wanted a fast truck. Never could have it. Finally, finally. Thank you so much Avalon King for the fuel system. Thank you so much Hellion Turbo for the freaking amazing turbo kit. Precision, thank you so much for the turbos. I could go on and on and on. So many people made this happen. ACW, freaking Morimoto, the retrofit source. I appreciate you guys so much. You're making a little kid's dream come true right now. I'm not really little, but my dream's true. Holy shit, I'm excited. It's not time to open the door. Yeah, it's getting a little, uh, a little, a little spicy in this region. All right, so we're gonna get the doors opened up next. And uh, after that, we're gonna start doing some idling data logs. Sorry for the noise. Anyway, we're about to go real quick, let this truck get up to operating temp, and then we're gonna start doing some data logs. Get everything data logged for idle. Once we're done with that, we finally get to take this thing out on the street. So let's get some cameras set up in here. Let's take this thing out. It's been a, it's been a long time coming, so. This thing can haul more than just your typical set of tools, lumber, or whatever the hell you wanna put in it. Cause it can haul ass. <laughs> All right, guys, we're getting ready to take this thing out for the first time. So before we do, we need to go ahead and do our data log. So while we're stuck here in park, we're gonna go ahead and rev it up to 1500 RPM and hold it for about 10 seconds. Do the same thing at 25 and 35. So this is gonna be the first time we get to hear this thing really up a little bit higher in RPM. Everything else been to 2000, so. Next thing that we need to do is we actually need to take it out on the street now and in second and third gear 
do a couple of very slow RPM climbs from 2,500 to 5,000. So let's go take this thing out on the street. Fuck for the first time. Oh my God. Let's go. Let's go. All the way out we go. This is insane. Ooh, I'm so lit. <laughs> we got this thing out in daylight. Maiden voyage. Yep. This is actually pretty exciting. I'm not even gonna lie. This yep. is pretty crazy. Well, we will be right back. This is crazy. This is very weird. Damn! That exhaust really doesn't sound bad at all. I love it. Yeah, it actually sounds pretty fire. Okay, slow RPM climbs. This is interesting actually being out on the street in it for the first time. Yeah, it's on turbo. It's a good note over here, honestly. Yeah. This is... God, dude, this is fucking sick. Holy shit. <laughs> it all came together very well. Fuck yeah. You can definitely hear the turbo whistle. Oh, yeah. There's no confusing it anymore. guys well our first initial data logs are done nothing crazy again just driving around getting everything dialed in for just normal driving but so far on a base tune it's really not doing bad at all cool dude those turbos oh my god it sounds good oh, yeah you couldn't hear a lot of them whenever it was just dumped under the truck i know but now out the side you can kind of get the whistle that is crazy. I guess that little bit of extended pipe helped resonate it a little bit more. Resonance and it gets it out the side of the truck so it's more open yeah. air versus being underneath. That is true. I definitely feel like a little kid. This is definitely is the shit. There's definitely a lot of turbo F-150s out there but this one will be unique for sure. Holy shit! There's a little bit of pop. That's what I like to do. Right as you're about to say, a little pop. Damn. Diesel burbles for the win. I don't even know if I've really stopped smiling since we've been started this motherfucker. I don't think I have. This is cruel so so far everything seems to be working well on a little casual drive around town nothing acting out of the ordinary at all no smoke no friggin nothing looks like we're doing all right we'll definitely do some systems checks on it again once we pull back up and let it idle but we'll send these logs off and double check everything on our end to make sure we're looking good for about 10 15 seconds cool deal successful that was yep yeah, everything oh, looks good ah oh, i feel so much better <laughs> i feel so relieved literally like an instant relief of driving it around and everything going well just just floods me right now <laughs> oh first data log is out of the way doug is exporting it currently we're gonna send it over to line so i can go ahead and kill it huh Holy hell, dude. Oh my God. I'm not kidding. Literally my entire like perspective at life just got flipped upside down from just riding in a truck around the block. It's, 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 it's perfect. <laughs> Honestly, it's pretty sick. And if you guys were wondering why we haven't put the front end of the truck back together, that's the next thing that we're gonna be doing. But of course we're wanting to wait until after we get done with the whole dyno session and everything in case 
we make so much boost that it just wants to blow some couplers off. I don't know, whatever, something, any shit just happens all the time. So keeping the front end off in case we need to get in there and service it. But so far, that was the coolest experience in a truck I've had. I'm gonna keep saying that every time that I have a new the coolest experience, this one right here, this was the coolest. Guess we'll be right back. We're gonna go ahead and get this log sent over to Lund. I'm just, I'm just shocked. So I'm gonna sit here and look at this for a second and uh, we'll be right back. We're gonna this, we're, we're, yeah. <laughs> all right. So we got a response back from Lund and everything does look good. Fueling is pretty close. Next thing that they need to see is a watt hit on the gate spring from 5,500 or up to 5,500 in third or fourth gear. So let's go ahead, take it out. We'll try and get up in third or fourth gear and see what she does. All right, and to 5,500. Six and a half pounds, so yeah, not bad, dude. You're right, honestly. That four inch exhaust sounds good, it does. It, it sounds, sounds really, good. really, really good. That was our first watt hit, so that was the first time that we were actually able to hear this thing really getting into it, getting a little spicy. And honestly, it sounds really good, really, really good. All right, yeah. first watt hit down, a lot more to go, yeah, a lot more to go. All right, guys, we just made it back from the first watt hit and um, nothing crazy yet at all, but it is very freaking impressive. Like really, really is, especially on gate with no timing on a bass tune on pump gas. It's, it's coming along. So I guess we'll wait on another one. All right, guys, we are back already. Lund has literally in just a few minutes sent us a revision and we are ready now to go out and data log to 7,000 RPM on a watt hit on the same level of boost. Six pounds, wastegate. Yeah. It might touch a hair more than that once I get some real load into it, but. Oh, we gonna see what she do. All right, 7,000 RPM. Six pounds on there, it's seeing about six pounds. That's pretty good for six pounds. Yeah. That's really not bad. All right, same thing again. You guys know the drill. Head it back, gonna take this log, send it over to line, see what we hear back from them. We've at this point, pretty much for six pounds on pump gas, we've tested all the way up to 7,000 RPM, so I'm sure they'll make a few changes. And if not today, maybe tomorrow, we're probably gonna be putting this thing on the dyno with the rate that they're going. Yeah, this thing's gonna do good. Hell yeah. Well, we're gonna get this thing over to Lund. We'll be right back. All right, guys. Well, looks like we're at a stopping point for today. It started raining and uh, it got pretty bad. So roads are pretty wet, but that's perfect timing because we're done with everything that we need to do on the street anyways. The next thing that we heard from Lund is that we need to go ahead and get this truck loaded up on the dyno. And tomorrow morning, first thing in the morning, 8 a.m., we're gonna be up here bright and early, dynoing this freaking truck, getting our pump gas tune completely dialed in and done. And then after that, we'll be able to get started on our E85 tune and start shooting for some real power. But again, for now, just to get the thing set up, we're gonna get to put it on the dyno today. Um, but unfortunately, I dropped the truck off, the F350 off, uh, to get an estimate done after the wreck and everything. We're just now getting all that done, by the way. I'm sorry that we haven't had an update. That's why. It's just been taking so freaking long, insurance company crap. But anyway, the fun part is that this giant lovely trailer is in the way. So we got Doug's car moved out of the way, but we got to figure out now how to get the Shebley truck somehow twisted in here and do like a 20 point turn to get it up on the dyno. But I guess that'll be it for today. Hell yeah, that's a good day. Oh wait, 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 wait. Did you know that right now, every dollar spent on itsjustasix.com will get you another automatic entry in to win this beautiful Legacy GT350? Bet you didn't. Go check it out now. That's all. <laughs> Woo! Oh, shit! Sounds fucking good. 
All right, let's get this thing on the dyno. Oh, we need some gas. Doug. <laughs> Doug. Dude. Hey, look, there's you guys. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. This thing is fucking sick. It really, really is. This is like my childhood dreams all coming to fruition at once right here. And I know there's a bunch of shit that I've been like, oh my God, I wanted that since I was a kid. But this one, I haven't wanted since I was a kid. I've just wanted it since a teenager. That sounds cool. Oh yeah, dude, just that wait. Like cool. I said, this thing is fucking crazy. Luckily we didn't get in boost and pin it. <laughs> that would have been a funny, a real cute moment. <laughs> I'm real interested to see how many people are gonna be like, what the fuck? Uh, all the way over there. Hell yeah, camo truck, brother. I can't wait until somebody acts like they know this truck or something or know what's done to it and they walk up, wow, nice supercharger. I'm like, fuck you, kid. You thought we were basic? Fuck no. Tell your mom there ain't no pussies around here. Turbo that bitch. Anyway. I'm gonna put some gas in here real fast. God, this thing is sick. Oh yeah, literally everybody is like. <laughs> this thing is funny. Loud. There's a state trooper out yonder. <laughs> I had to pull out of here and do a slang dang. Start practicing with the old drift truck now. Seven gallons should be good, I think. Pretty sure that should be good. I don't want to fill it up too much because we're going to have to literally drain all of this E85, or not E85, all this pump gas out whenever we put E85 in, so. Half tank. Oh, I left the fuck. I'm a fucking idiot. I am one of those people now. I literally just left the fucking gas cap open. How am I one of those people? Come on, brother. I would love to try and drift this truck one day, but I need to get real good at drifting before I try and throw this thing around. I would I would probably, I think my life would actually probably be over if something happened to this truck at this point. I don't know if I'd have a reason to want to continue on. <laughs> I'm not trying to be dark. That's just the way it is. That's just the shit. That's just the fucking truth. <laughs> All right, and now we're gonna start a 20 point turn. All right, up we go. I am so, so, so excited for this thing. Up we go. Up we go. Bye. Bye. Ah. <laughs> I'm sure that secondary GoPro down there is actually probably making for some cool shit. <sighs> yes, sir. <sighs> All right, truck is on the dyno. Next thing that you guys are gonna see, hopefully tomorrow morning, we're gonna be up here getting this thing really hopefully dialed in on pump gas. We're gonna see what kind of power it's really making. We're only on six pounds right now, but I'm thinking tomorrow we'll probably end up turning it up to like nine, 10 pounds, something like that, depending on how comfortable they are on pump gas. Realistically, the truck should make tomorrow. We'll keep, we're trying to keep it as safe as possible because where we've gone wrong in the last vehicles is try to make as much horsepower as remotely possible. But the problem is, is that that leads to a lot of issues. So we're keeping this one completely safe being that we're on all stock components still. So we're looking to make honestly, realistically, just under 700 at the wheel, something like that nothing crazy crazy but you do have to remember it's four-wheel drive truck so it'll be a lot of fun but anyways with that being said <laughs> wow good shit always happens when it rains but anyway with that being said let's i don't even know god no no wait no wow anyway with that being said guys thank you so much for watching if you have if you haven't already drop a like on this video Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of this thing so far. And we'll see you guys next video.